to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Today I'm joined by someone who the two of us have been talking about having her on the show for a very long time. And finally, today is the day. Lorna Gross, owner of Lorna Gross Interior Design, is here to talk about the art of the pivot. Lorna is perfect to talk about this because she hasn't always owned an interior design firm. She went from dancing and singing to corporate America before finally opening her interior design business. After two business degrees and a very successful life in corporate America, Lorna ended up disappointed and unhappy. As successful as she was winning awards and being promoted, it just didn't feel fulfilling for her. And I'll tell you, if pivoting into a new career sounds scary to you, Lorna is here to let you know that nothing you do on the way to where you end up is a waste of time. She also wants to help you to recognize the signals that tell you it's time to pivot, pivot, and she wants to teach you how to be strong enough to do something about it. Because when you know the season is over, you have to trust your inside voice to move on. Please enjoy this conversation with Lorna. Hey, Lorna, thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Thank you, Luann. So glad to be here. And thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to attend this. (laughs) Yeah, me too. And it's so funny because I'm like, being with you is just bringing me back to Deb at Century (laughs) and John at Century. And of course, the Dove Agency because... You know, these are the times that we've been together. We've been to beautiful (laughs) dinners, one hosted by Century, one hosted by the Dove Agency, and we've both been at both of them. And that's been so fun getting to know you guys. vibing and eating well. (laughs) That's it, with good people and good companies, right? Yeah. So, okay. So here's the thing. This is a long time coming because that that, that first time I met you, I think it was in 2018. Was it? Oh, because it was before COVID, wasn't it? It was. Right. So it's tw- it had to be 2018 or 2019. It might have been, I think it might have been 2018. Yeah. Like that's how long we've been saying, oh, you should get yeah. on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so if I've said that to you before and you still have been on the show, keep in mind, Lauren, it's been <laughs> four years we're trying to do Wait, this, wait, so. where's my turn? Where's that's my it, turn? That's it. <laughs> So here's the thing. What's interesting is I just said this on another interview that I did where I I do have the chance to get to know many of you like yourself at multiple times. But then I read your intake form and I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) So you were a dancer, a singer and in corporate America all before you became an interior designer. I'm just like, wait, and you don't look old enough to have that many iterations of yourself, first of all. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. But I'm definitely about the pivot. I'm about the pivot. That's it. And so that's an interesting thing that you just said, because, you know, off air, you just said to me, one of the things I want to make sure we drive home is that you can pivot and you can reinvent and that there's scariness with it. So where do we want to start the conversation? Do we want to start with like, why you do we want to start from let's, why you went from dance and singing do, to corporate? Let's, let's like, do this chronologically. Let's do this chronologically. Okay. 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 <laughs> if I can remember back that far. <laughs> but, um, you know, just to begin, um, I, I was actually born in New York, but grew up in Louisiana and, um, you know, very different kind of cultures. But in Louisiana, you know, football was like really big. So I danced. Um, at the football games, and I was singing when I was in high school, and I even danced in the Super Bowl, believe it or not. Not many people know that. Wow. (laughs) But um, the town that I grew up in was a beautiful town, lovely people, but 
it also was um, not the most wealthy area. Mm. Um, so when I decided that I was going to go to college, I didn't choose to do dance. I didn't choose to sing. I decided to major in business because I thought it was practical and I thought that I could mm. take care of myself. So um, fast forwarding, I end up in getting these two, two business degrees and then I end up in corporate America. So I'm in corporate America now, like a number of years, and I have a great track record. I've won all these awards. I'm like helping to manage multi-million dollar products, and I'm up for a promotion. And so I'm ready for my promotion. I create my dossier. I have all of my mentors speak on my behalf, and I get to the interview. And the director says to me, and he's a man, he says, Lorna. I know that you've achieved all these things. I know your track record and I know all of your accomplishments. But the only thing is I've played golf with Doug and I know him better. Holy cow. Like, that's insane. And just for context, what decade are we talking? We're, tar- we're talking early 2000s. Like, not that long ago. Whoa. Not that long ago. Right. We're not yeah. like 70s. Like, whoa. Eight, like, yes, you're not like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. I have to tell you what I thought you were going to say, which is just as bad, is I thought you were going to say that he said, but Lorna, do you have a plan to start a family? I thought you were going to say that, which is just as bad. Would have been just as bad. Just as much. So here's the thing. What he's saying is you're completely qualified. You're a great lady, great business person, all the things. But he kind of knows the other person up for the position better because we're golf chums. That is correct. That and is... he's dumb enough to say it to your and face. That's wasn't that, the insanity. Isn't that amazing, Luann? Like the like gall. The, like the brashness Exactly. Of it. Yes. <laughs> the gall. Right? I love the word yes, temerity, not... too. I love, I love words that have three syllables. Temerity, the gall. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like what? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Yeah. So, so did did you quit? Did you quit? I did not quit. And and to be completely, tr- I thought you were going to say that's what I no, said. No, you know it. what? And I will say own. this: I didn't quit. I didn't quit immediately. So let me tell you the first thing that I did. The first thing that I did is I went home and I cried. To be completely transparent, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. There's, a, I like, sure. You know, I I got myself a bubble because bath. Because it's insurmountable. Oh my gosh! Am like, I going to learn to play golf in order to get a promotion? Like, it's not based on my work. It's like on the, how far I can putt. Like, this is exactly. Dumb. So, <laughs> so in that moment, and here's the thing: I believe that the universe does these things to us to get us to make a different move. Okay. Mm-hmm. So while I'm crying, I'm like in the tub. And I'm like, okay, now, now that you're done, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? That's right. So that same company was sending me away to a um, to Center for Creative Leadership. It's like this course for managers, and it's like 360-degree feedback and all of that. And they told me at that, that particular session that I had some of the highest scores they've seen, but they said, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing for a living. And I said, okay, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? And he said, well, we can't tell you that. You have to figure that out on your own. So, so this, this conference is, I'm like in, in Colorado. I come back to Chicago at the time. I go to Barnes & Noble. I try to go look for some books. How can I figure out Where's what it parachute? is that I'm supposed to be doing? <laughs> so um, it turns out that I started this six-month experiment to figure out what it is that I was supposed to be doing. And it required me to write my own obituary. It required me to interview my parents. It required me to have a better understanding for what my gifts were and all of that. And everything pointed to interior design. I also had to interview people in different professions, but everything wound up pointing to interior design. So um, the punchline of the story is I actually wound up getting the job because the VP basically was like, no, you are going to, you were going to hire her. But by that time, oh. Luann, it was too late. Right. It was like too, your brain had passed. It was too late. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you turned a corner. Yeah. Because I was yeah, like, all corner. of this work that I've been doing for this company and all the money I've helped ma- you make, and this mm-hmm. is the reward that I receive. Absolutely not. This is not the culture that mm-hmm. I want to work in. 
so from there, I was like, okay, so what am I going to do? So I now, I got already two business degrees. Okay, now what am I going to do? Um, I did not like talking about efficacy rates and standard deviations, by the way, because I was working in marketing, but I was in pharmaceuticals. And I was like, I only enjoy this stuff anyway. So anyway, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm great at it. And I made you a lot of money, but now I don't like it. It's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so anyway, I decide to, um, to start working for a communications agency. And in doing that, I was able to go back to school at night to get my interior design degree. So um, that's what I did. I was still kind of working in a highly corporate oriented or business environment, but I was going to um, take my classes at night. And that's what I did. So um, now another little story here on this, though, when we talk about the art of the pivot um, and the pitfalls and little things that will kind of get in your way and kind of take you off the path. So I will say like about three or four weeks before I'm getting ready to leave that my company, um, I'm riding one summer with my mother, my mother. And I'm like, I'm like, mommy, I'm getting ready to leave this job. And she's like, you're not going to leave this job. You've got all of these benefits. And I did. I had stock options. I had trips to Hawaii. I had great friends. I had all of this stuff. And I was like, for that moment, I was like, Dad, should I not leave this job? You know, because this is my mother saying this to me. Right. But I remember in that moment, like feeling something compress in me. And what I responded with was, mommy, the only way that I won't do this is if I'm not courageous enough. Mm. And so it was almost like from that moment on, I just kept telling myself, have the courage, have the courage, because you're going to be scared when you do anything new. But you have to kind of like say, despite the fear, despite being scared, I'm still going to move forward. And that's what I did. So, so much in there. Okay. So, so much in there. So here's the thing. Um, I think re- right on that moment there where you're saying, if I, if I don't, the only reason I wouldn't is because I'm not courageous enough. It's, we do have to be willing to bet on ourselves. Mm-hmm. And yes, Luann. when you say like your mother is pointing out all of the wonderful things that are coming with this job, but at the end of the day, she probably was not aware keenly that you weren't actually satisfied. You weren't actually feeling fulfilled, right? Like, like you said, like it wasn't fun. You didn't like it. And it's so the trappings aren't worth it. But we do have these things, these, these major influences in our life where, you know, your mother could very well be like many of us mothers now and our mothers were like, I'm sorry, that pays the bills and it pays a lot of them. That, that's <laughs> like, it. That's it. Who, who said anything about being happy? <laughs> like, and, I, and I think that is so true. Though, I mean, our right? generation of mothers and parents, it was yes! like, right? Like. You yeah, have a right, you have a good right. paying job, girl. You don't have to be happy. Yeah. Just get the paycheck and go home. Be happy when you get right. home. And it's, <laughs> that's it. It's like, and I, I, my mother listens to every darn show. She's gonna be like, I never said that to you. And you're right. You never did, mom. She never did. But I, I do understand that it would not be unkind or unusual for a parent to look at the package of your corporate job and think, what are you doing? Right. So your point, what I'm saying, your statement of I, the, I have to be courageous. That's like truly there because you're the one getting all the benefit of that corporate job. You have all the cushion, you have all the things and you're going to put it on the line and walk away. And then you've got, you know, people you love going, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think not easy. Yeah, I think for me, um, looking back now, as you're, as you're talking to me, I'm kind of thinking like what was in my head. And I think that I was trying to choose joy. I think I was yes. just trying to get to the place of joy, knowing that you wake up every morning going to work, knowing that I was waking mm-hmm. up with a bit of dread every morning. As a matter yes. of fact, I would get it yes. on Saturday, Luann. 
on oh, Saturday yeah. evening. I would, so what do we have, like 12 man. hours from Friday night to yeah. Saturday morning that we were happy on? It's a weekend. And then it's like, oh, my God, the weekend's almost over. Yeah. Yeah. But I also think that that's a hint, right? Um, so when I talk to people. Right. That's such a, it's a, that's a smack in the face, Lorna, not a hint. Yeah. That's like big, right? <laughs> yeah. But it, but I do think, you know, once again, that, you know, there's these little, there's not like little, this is, this is bigger, as you said. You get these signals that say, you know what, maybe you're not supposed to be here. I do. Yeah. I am somebody who also believes that everything is for a season, right? Mm, like yes. some things just, most things are really not for forever. Most things right. are for a right. season. And that season might be a long season, but it might be a short season. The key is to kind of have an understanding for when the season is over and it's time to move to the next one. That, you know what, that, that's right there. Like that is the thing right there. The key is to understand when it's time to move on to a different season that honor what happened, honor that you got something. I'm sure, you know, you, your experience in corporate, two business degrees that your experience in corporate totally informed your interior design business to totally inform probably the way you relate with your high luxury consumers in the DC area. I mean, come on, you were built to like, just be like, let's do this. You know, like I, I speak your language here, right? You know what's funny mm-hmm. though is when I was making that transition, I thought to myself, I wasted all these years. I literally, oh, I see, remember in the thinking, moment, in the moment I that. thought, man, I've invested all of this time and all this effort in business. And now I'm going to become an interior designer. Like I've wasted all these years. And I think that I was, I had, I had finished my degree and had started my business. I think I was maybe, maybe nine months to 12 months in when I was like, all right. Oh, yes. I'm using this. <laughs> I'm using this. That's, that's and right. so that's one other thing that I would share with your listeners is that nothing is wasted on our journey. Nothing is wasted. Everything. It all happens for a reason. It all conspires to bring you to the place that you're supposed to be. However, your point is well made. You have to recognize when it's time for the switch and not stay somewhere just because that's where you are, right? It's like, it can't be, this is what I've always done. So I'm going to keep doing it. Right. Right. right? And, and the, yeah. you know, the unfortunate thing is that the soft signals will come along and if you don't get it, you're going to get knocked in the head with a cinder block after a while. Like <laughs> the universe is like, <laughs> okay, look, I tried to tap you on the shoulder, but it's so true. It's so true. It's so true. Good messages, bad messages. You know, when you're when you're on the right track, the universe sends you the messages that it's good. When you're on the wrong track, yeah. and it's I just did an Instagram live today with Katie McDonald, and we talked about the same thing. It was in in regard to your health and your yes. wellness care. It's like okay, so maybe the first couple of signs are that you're getting three or four colds a year. And Ah. then, oh, you're not, you're not, you don't want to take care of yourself. Oh, okay, sweetie. So maybe this is, we're going to do now, this is going to happen to you. And then like, and I know me, I was saying in the Instagram, when I am got myself to a point where I'm not taking good care of myself, my throat will hurt Mm. because what is the one thing? that I still can't do this wow. with. Wow. Like, and as soon as I just go, That's okay, deep. thank you. Yeah, it is. And the thing is, the sore throat, as soon as I just switch a fl- switch the flip and I go, okay, so tonight I'm just going to relax or whatever. And tomorrow morning, instead of working like an idiot until the first interview or, it, it, you know, if I make the immediate boom, the sore throat goes away like that. You know it's, I, it's when I ignore it that it, it lays me down and we have to cancel interviews. And wow. I'm like, oh, see. I find that so interesting because I do think that we get hit by it at different areas of our body, right? Mm-hmm. Mine hits me in my abdomen and my abdomen feels like it's doing this. And yeah, sometimes I'm nodding. not paying attention because mm-hmm. it's, it creeps in it kind of creeps in in little increments, right? And then all of a sudden Mm -hmm. it's like taking over. Yeah, you're out of balance and it's trying to tell you you're out of balance. And so so what we're talking about is that, you know, in your corporate career, you were having those similar signals. Mm -hmm. And some, I'm sure, that moment when he's like, hey, I golf with Dan, (laughs) that was like, 
you know, the big bang on the head, but there were probably other signals along, maybe when you were waking up and not feeling charged up to go to work or Saturday. I mean, it's one thing to dread Monday on Sunday night. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I know it was pretty morning. pathetic. It was pretty pathetic. <laughs> I mean, but you know, they also used to have- like the hindsight <laughs> of that, right? The hindsight is like, duh. I know. <laughs> you know, I, we used to also have these dinners, you know, we'd work all day and then we'd have these dinners and then they would want to talk about work at dinner. And I'm like, no, I don't want to talk about work anymore. Like, but they were rejuvenated right. by it. I wasn't. I was like, uh, mm. you know, and I would like, I was known for this. Like I would, have, I would have dinner and then I would take my dessert back to my hotel room. I was like known for that move. Y'all go ahead. Keep talking. You guys keep talking about it. That's it. <laughs> but you know, to, <laughs> to, to the point that you were talking about, you know, about the signals that we get. What I've learned now, what I know now, and I think I probably got this message maybe somewhere like around five years ago, is that the most important thing that we can do for ourselves is to take time to go quiet. Mm-hmm. Because the divine is speaking to us all the time. It's But if we're like running around like a crazy person, there is no breath to receive the message. So what I've learned to do is every Sunday I spend some time, sometimes I don't have a whole bunch of time. I'll at least do 15 minutes. Sometimes it's an hour, but I try to meditate and pray. So, um, Mm -hmm. and then I also do that every morning. So every, every morning I spend 10 to 15 minutes before I even put my foot down on the floor, I'm in bed and I'm like saying, God, thank you so much for waking me up today. And then I have my affirmations for what I want this day to be. Cause, and by the way, girly, I, one of my affirmations today was this podcast is going to be awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) Go for it. Um, if you intend yeah, it, it'll happen. Know, <laughs> but, I, but I do think that it is something that's very important to do because I think that intuition is a big thing, right? Intuition, we get these signals. The question is whether or not we're going to pay attention to them, but they're there. Yes. But if we mm-hmm. are just like, if we have a life that is created that is so busy that every moment is spoken for, there's no time, there's no air mm-hmm. to receive the right. signal and the message. Yeah. You need the white space. Your brain needs the white yeah. space. It needs the space to think, reflect, you know, gather the hindsight and, and to hear the inside voice, to hear our goddess voice. Like what the heck is happening here? Um, the thing is that many times we'll hear the voice, but we, we don't do what you said is take the courage to move on it. Right. You got to have the, you got to, you got to combine it with the courage and you have to have a capacity for, for risk. And you have to have a capacity for not everything is going to work out, but like for me, everything is a lesson. Like I, I don't, you know, it's kind of like, what do they say? You know, what, what is it? Um, WD 40, you know, like that WD 40, you know why it's called 40 because it's the 40th formula until it worked. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 It's like, I forget what the WD stands for, but it's like, I don't know. It's some really obvious WD (laughs) that it's like, I, you know, but it's 40, it's the 40th version of it that finally worked. And it's like, if you, you, you have to, risk failure to get to the next season, that next thing that you're supposed to do. And sometimes you do fail 39 times. Sometimes you make that risk and it works out the first time. That's good. But like, who cares? Like, as long as we're not stuck, you know, dreading Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Because interestingly, even the path to interior design was kind of like a, I'm on the path and off the path kind of thing. So I was one of those girls when I grew up that I didn't have Barbie dolls, even though I love that Barbie movie, but I didn't have, I didn't have Barbie dolls. <laughs> I had Lincoln Logs. So I was always oh. building. My father was a contractor. So there were always these floor plans and blueprints and stuff like that around the house that I would just sit there and look at. I got I got kicks out of that. Um, That's crazy. And after I got my MBA, 
um, people, I, I'd moved into a house and people who'd come to the house would be like, oh, Lorna, you know, you're really talented at this. And I really enjoyed the whole idea of interior design and decorating. But I started to do it for a couple of friends and it wasn't working for me because, I don't know, like one friend would be like, girl, I didn't get that wallpaper. I decided to buy the shoes instead. And I'm like, you know what? You know what? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so, it, so I, le- I, I just dipped my toe in and then I left. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think that timing is also everything, right? So it may not have been the appropriate time for me to do that, but I was still wired for it. You know, like my, my mother was a teacher, but she was also a seamstress. So I also had all these beautiful fabrics around the house. So, you know, Mm -hmm. I also believe that our environment that we grow up in also oftentimes informs who we are supposed to become. Right. Um, so I think that that, it kind of, kind of just all kind of came to together, right? Yeah, it really is interesting how all of those um, different things in your childhood, like that's crazy. Your father with the blueprint plans and, and being in construction and building things, your mother with the, ta- the fabric and the textiles, like it's almost like funny. And I have to say, I think you know for 100% that, the level of success that you've attained in your design firm is a lot based on that business career that you could come to it and put a structure around it, not just pretty fabric and yada, yada. Like that was not wasted time, right? That was, that was your training for running a profitable business. And and you're so right, Luann, because um, just being in corporate America and being responsible for um, different budgets also helped me, yeah. right, in um, creating forecasts and creating marketing plans and business plans and creating strategy and tactics. And also knowing that, as you said earlier, um, quite eloquently, we're not always going to succeed. Like everything that we try is not going to be a success. But okay, like when this doesn't work out, then what do you do? Okay, this didn't right. work out. So then what do you do? So Um, The thing I do like to think about when I think of failure is that failure means that you tried. Right. You know, and so in this whole idea of reinventing oneself or reimagining oneself, you kind of have to try to see if you were even going to have a shot at it. Right. And I think for women in particular, you know, we are not taught as much to take risks as much as men. Mm. You know, just to, just to kind of throw it out there and see what's going to happen. And as you said, mm-hmm. to kind of, to bet on yourself, to bet on yourself. Right. 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 And so, so you've done this. So is it, was the first time just like grit, that's it. Like you looked at your mother and said, I'm going to muster the courage and I'm going to do this. Right. Yes. Okay. Now you're, yes. yes. But I will say this. So okay. this is the cool thing though, right? The cool thing is once you do it once, you refer back to it. And you know that you can do it again. And I mean mm-hmm. that in in every aspect of one's life, right? Like not just career, but also relationships. You know, hey, you know, if you, if you have to like say, okay, I'm going to walk away from this, it's okay because it's going to be replaced with something else or better, right? So once you do it once, the, the fear of it starts to minimize because you see how you're still here. If you failed or you didn't fail, you're still here. And if you failed, you've had learnings that will help you for the next time. So so for me, this whole journey keeps going, right? So during during COVID, um, it was quiet and I love to write. I've always loved to write from when I was a kid. Um, I just started writing this book. I don't even know where it came from on like entertaining. Cause I, well, no, I should say, I do know where it comes from. It comes from. I love um, entertaining. My sister and I were always responsible for setting the table um, every Sunday for our, uh, our family, formal, formal setting. And then um, that was in New York. And then in Louisiana, um, we like had the picnic stuff, crawfish boils, crab feasts, and we would dance on the tables. And, you know, so like the whole idea of entertaining and um, bringing people together and human connection and fellowship is very important to me. So I think that was kind of where I was. I started writing this book on entertaining um, and tabletop design. And um, it just started flowing, right? 
and listen, remember I was wow. telling you about being, when it was flowing because it was quiet. Mm, it was right, quiet. Right, so I'm right, just right. like getting the signals like, okay, what you're going to do today? You can't go out and go hang out with people. You might as well just go ahead and keep writing, you know? So, <laughs> so, so that's what I did. You may as well be an author. I might as well do really that. Really fabulous Might book. as well do that. <laughs> um, and as you and I were talking about these other little signals, like sometimes it's dread. But then sometimes it's the things that people say to you, right? So people mm. said to me, oh, Lorna, you know, it seems like you have a talent at design. And you shouldn't ignore these things that people say might be natural talents for yourself. Um, for about three years, I'm a member of the Design Trust, right? And we have these, these meetings that occur twice a year. And at about three meetings, my colleagues kept coming up to me out of nowhere saying, Lorna, you need to talk. Lorna, you, you need to talk. You need to. And I'm like, no, I don't talk. I don't talk. No, no. You Did you did you have a show before? No, I never had a show. Lorna, you need to talk. No, I don't talk. I don't talk. I listen. I don't talk. I ask questions and I talk. <laughs> so, so what started happening, though, very weird, was just before, I think this was maybe like a few weeks before COVID, I started getting all these inquiries for shows. Like, from, yeah, wow. from like all these different shows, TV shows and all that stuff. I'm like, what is this? Like, God, what are you doing? Why are you sending all these things to me? None of them were a perfect fit. But what they did was they opened my mind to see that maybe other folks saw something else in me that I wasn't tapping into. Right. And I had right. and I right. had the option of either saying I wasn't going to pay attention to it and just kind of brush it off or really look at it. So um, this year, and actually this fall, I'm going to be launching a podcast. But to me, it's amazing because I was always known as a shy kid. So for me to be doing this, even doing this podcast, girl, probably five years ago, I would have been like, Louie, I'm not, I know that's, that's why, that's what I'm able to do is I'm not talking to you. (laughs) But the thing is, it's like, just because you haven't done it before, doesn't mean that you can't do it. And I, and I think, you know, for your listeners, that's important too, because one does not have to necessarily be an expert or a master at something to embark on it, something new. Everybody has something of value to offer, even if it's not so done good. that way previously. That's so good. I love that. Because if we sit around and we wait until the moment that we feel 100% ready and that we feel that we've reached expert status, like, I don't know that that ever comes. I don't know that that feeling comes. Never. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that that, I, how could you get there? Because if you... If you get there, then you're saying you can't get better. And I feel like I can always get better. Every day I can get better at something. So I love that you say you don't have to wait until you feel like you're an expert. You know something. You know what you know. And you just have to, like, quantify it, right? And qualify it and put your box around it to present it out there, yes, right? Yes, And everybody has their own unique perspective, um, but, and I, and once again, going back to women, women always think that we have to have all of our ducks in a row first. You know, you always hear, mm-hmm. um, people talk about how women don't apply for jobs because their resume doesn't check all the boxes in the job posting. Right. Whereas men are like, Hey man, I checked two out of 20 boxes. I'm interviewing for that. <laughs> you know? So, so it's like, you know what? If you feel like you have something to offer, you know, take the risk and step out there and try to do it. I was going to ask you, when you started your podcast, did you, were you 100% sure or were you like, you know what? Hmm. Like, what were you thinking? What was in your head when you started? So there's, there's, so I'm very, very also keen on intuition and, and the signs Mm. and my brain processes that I always call it in verticals. Mm. So this thing happens here and this thing happens here and this thing happens here and that thing happens there. And they all seem like they're in their own silo, but then there's a moment where something will happen and it's like, whoa, they're all connected and they all connect and point to this. Mm. And then what happens is, then I get very sure. So there was that moment, the whole backstory on these five or six things that all one day I was like, oh, it's a podcast. <laughs> okay. 
I, I need a podcast. This is what I have to do. So the thing is, when you say, was I sure? And did I feel like I was an expert at it before I decided? The answer is yes and no. I had absolute clarity at that moment that these other things all happened for a reason and brought me to that decision. But at that moment, I didn't know what the podcast would be about. At that moment, I didn't have the slightest idea how I would podcast. What did that mean? I listened to podcasts at that point, but I didn't know how do you record one? How do you edit one? How does one get from the recording out to the world? <laughs> right. Like, how do you make that little thing on the at iTunes that says the name of your podcast? <laughs> like, none of it. None of it. But I was 100% certain that this was what I should do. Now, was I 100% certain that it would be good, that I would be good at it? Was I an expert? Was there anything in my world that said, yeah, you'll be a great podcaster? No, there was nothing. <laughs> there was no evidence of that. Now, am I ridiculously, insatiably curious? Yes. Do I have to ask you like so many questions that my husband's like, I'm sorry. This is a cocktail party. You're interrogating them. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just really want to know. Right. You know what I mean? And so there were skill sets that I expected would be good, but there was clarity that it was what to do, but recognition of expertville and even rec recognition of amateurville, like <laughs> none of that. Like, no. But then that's when you get down and you do the work and you listen to the goddess in your head and you're like, yeah, lady, I'm yeah. doing it. I got yeah. this. I'm going to figure this yeah. out, you know? And then what happens is I think to your point, when we talk about the other signs, like your sign on Saturday that you were already dreading Monday, you get the signs, like I said, the positive signs yes. too. Like you do it and you're like, whoa, that's yes. fine. That's yes. cool. I like that. And then I got the huge gift of having an audience that from the beginning told me they were listening. Mm. I will never forget. It was like two or three weeks of podcasting and Mary Fran Broussard emailed Window Works and she said, you know, blah, 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 blah. I listened oh, to your podcast. I'm so, and I'm telling you what, me and Kim, Kim was like, you should see the email that came into Windows. I'm like, what? And she's like, somebody listens to your show. I'm like, what? You know, it was nuts. Mm. And so I just have been extremely fortunate in that way. And so that's why as a habit, I think I was raised this way and it was part of my DNA, but I love to look at people and say, I see you, you're doing a good job yes. because it means so yes. much. You have no idea who it means, what it means yes. to people. I love that um, Oprah Winfrey would say that all the time. You know, they would ask her like why her interviews as varied as they were, were so successful. And she said what mm. she recognized was that everyone wants to feel valued. Yes, everyone wants to feel seen and everyone wants to feel valued. And if you are genuinely curious about that special secret sauce of each person, how if you really want to know what that is, how can you not show them that they're valuable, right? Right. 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 Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. It's, and I think when you talk yeah, about so, that, you know, that, that sauce, I think one of the things that makes your podcast so successful is that everyone has their unique perspective, right? And Yep. When you started your podcast, you were filling this gap that no one else had filled for us as interior designers. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. at that time also talking, interior designers talking amongst themselves about business was taboo. Like, we don't right. talk about that. Yep. We can listen to this podcast, I though. Know. That's right. Well, and the thing is, see, I come from window treatment industry where we always share. Mm. We always, we always like, okay, you know, what's, how much profit margin you're doing? And, you know, what do you pay your salespeople? <laughs> right. Like, you know, we, Vinny and I, that's, you know, we always ran like the organizations where the first it was window works and now it's exciting windows where that's our culture. Mm. And so for me, I just started asking people, how much do you charge for that? And what do you make? And what do you pay your people? And they're like, wait, what? And I didn't even, for me, like, I can remember people saying to me, oh my God, you're, you got people talking about it in the industry. Like, and I'm like, yeah, I just, 
why wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, why wouldn't you help each other out by doing mm-hmm. it? And so I'm glad that we've made the mm-hmm. turn. And because you realize that the more you know has no negative impact on the other person. It's just the more you right. know. And the more you know, then you share something else and somebody else knows something. Yes, it's, yes. There's no, no, it's, it's fill the cup and it just keeps filling. It's not, it doesn't come out of somebody else's yeah. cup. Right? I also love the so, lesson that you were talking about when you were mentioning the people who cheered you on along the way, because I do think that that's so critical when you're pivoting is to surround yourself mm-hmm. with people who are going to cheer you on, people who are going to support mm-hmm. you, and people who are going to speak belief into you. Because yes. you're not going to be confident all the time. You're not necessarily, unless they're you, you're not going to be 100, unless no. you're not going to be 100% sure all the time. And Well, but see, you can be sure it's what you should do, but you're not sure it's you're doing it well or doing yes. it the right yes. way. That's, that's Absolutely. the thing. That's Absolutely. Why- Absolutely. Like, yeah, and it is that gift of validation and of appreciation from others. And you're right. You have to surround yourself with people that believe you can do mm-hmm. it and that want you to succeed because it is, you know, at every time. Look, seven years in and how many years as a designer? I'm sure there's moments where you're just like, did I really nail that one? Yeah. Or is that really a good design? Or yeah. Gosh, did I do that proposal the right way? Listen, Luann, I had a moment literally two weeks ago, right? So, uh, you know, I'm I'm pivoting like nobody's business right now. I'm like, I'm reimagining everything right now. <laughs> so, so I created these um, curated travel experiences, right? The first is going to launch to New Orleans in April. And mm. it's, you know, very high level. It's exclusive. It's fabulous. I'm giving the backstory to like, you know, the, the town, the surrounding town, like the music. I mean, it's everything. So listen. I Wait, I just got to say, you have to come over to YouTube and watch Lorna describe this. <laughs> she just is, it is, I mean, you like the body language <laughs> describing this. It is worth <laughs> travel to YouTube. I love it. <laughs> Own it, oh, own it, own, own it. it, do it, do it. <laughs> but, um, but seriously though, like two weeks ago, I was like, man, nobody's going to, nobody's going to want to join, go get on this vacation thing with you, girl. Nobody's going to want to travel with you because these little right. things, especially when you haven't done it before, That's you right. haven't done it before. So that question mark goes up there. Can you do it? Is it going to be successful? And so in the moments when maybe you don't even have the friends around to do it. You may have the friends to do it, but sometimes you need a little bit more. So I follow um, Joel Olstein. He's a pastor out of mm. uh, Houston, Texas, and he speaks about positivity. Love him. But he also has a book that came out like just in time, right? Like, like last month. And it's about believing. And so like right now, like every night I'm reading chapters of that book about about believing. So I only say that to say that you can surround yourself with resources all the way around that help speak positivity and belief and faith into you that anything is possible, that you can accomplish anything. Well, and it's funny because as you were talking, I wrote, go back to that, I know it. So what I mean is by that is you came up with this curated travel. You you believe in it you know it is valuable. You know you are going to deliver an amazing experience. Like I said, if you're not sure, go watch her physically (laughs) describe it, like literally owns it. And so, but the thing about it is, is to your point, it's you're going to have those moments along the way where you're, you question it. And, and, and that's my thing. And I hope it's clear. I was not from day one, I know this will be successful. I was from day one. I know I need to do it. But then as you're creating it and you're doing the interviews and you're like, is that a good interview? Does anybody care? And that you have to, to your point, you have to keep pushing through. You have the people around you who will support you, but you have to push through the doubt. And for me, I go back to, 
I made a very logical decision that this was good for my life, my personality, my skill set, and it was needed in the industry. Those are four valid, non-debatable facts. So over here, you wondering if it matters and anybody's listening and did you do a good job, you're going to need to put those on a little hot shelf while you just pay attention to these <laughs> yes. things to get your butt through this process, right? <laughs> so, so right now, you're going to put those little doubts on a shelf and when you launch it and the roster fills up, <laughs> up and you do and here's what i'm going to tell you you're going to do your first trip to new orleans and when you plan the second one you're going to start all over again does anybody want to go is anybody going to want to <laughs> no, come again like no way gonna- look there's this thing, there's this thing that i learned though this thing that i learned i never heard this term un- until like three months ago and it's called habituation i love it mm. so habituation is that the more you do something the easier it gets right yes yes yes, yes now yes, meanwhile yes. i might want to do the trip differently um, next right. time, but there will be, and they would have been learnings al- along the way. And I'll know like, okay, how to, you know, do it such that more of the question marks are taken away. Yes, yes, yes. Well, and I'm going to tell you, look, I do the power talk Friday tours. They're one day coaching events, right? I've done seven, eight, nine of them. Every one of them has been fantastic. Every one of them has been a success. And literally two weeks before every one, I'm like, are we, is this like, okay, is this the last one? Are we never going to do this again? And then all of a sudden we get, you know, 10 more signups and we have a full house of 24 designers, you know, and I'm like, okay, okay, I guess. Well, okay. So I just like, it's funny because Sandra Funk was on the show a a month or so ago and she talked about the millionaire mindset, Mm -hmm. right? And it's kind of, I think that, Sometimes when we look at others, whether within our industry or out, and they look like who we think they are, we all have this in us. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. but I think the, the secret sauce, that little difference is if I have come to a good quality decision that is based on as much information as I can gather and my gut, my inner goddess is like, Yes, then I will push through. I will just give it my very, very, very best, and I will fight tooth and nail. And if it if it fails, then it's going to iterate. Then it's like, oh, that wasn't yeah. good. Like you yeah. said, you're going to learn things on the New Orleans thing, but that doesn't mean you're going to pitch doing curated travel. Right. You're going to say, right. maybe we do this, right? And so it's a combination of data and intuition See, and to your words, courage. Yes. And I, and I love what you said, because I want to make it clear that we're not talking about just taking a risk and stepping out with no knowledge, right? Like nope. there's no man to be smart about it. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of planning. There may be interviewing of multiple people from different backgrounds who are experts in this area that you might want to go to. So, but what we have to say is at some point you have to take the leap, right? That's right. That's but right. You prepare first. You work in a, in a level of excellence as best you can, and then you take the leap. That's right. right. And your level of excellence will grow every month and every year. Yes. To your first point, do we need to be the expert to just do it? No. Like I literally, one time, about four years ago, I listened to one of my podcast episodes from the first uh-huh. year. Because we were going to do a flashback Friday. I've said this story before. Okay. We were going to do a flashback Friday. I probably lost my, you know, throat. I, and then we were like, <laughs> okay, so what are we going to do? And I'm like, okay, I'm listening to the universe. The universe is like, you know, shut up and relax. And I was like, okay. So we were like, okay, we could do a flashback Friday. And I said, okay, so you know what? I want to pick this one particular episode. I remember this, this Veronica Solemn. She was an amazing, she is an amazing coach to interior designers. And she's such a leader in the industry. And I said, you know what? People probably don't even realize I had her on in the first six months of the podcast. Mm, Let's do that. Yes. Lorna, what? I, I said, okay, let me listen to the episode. Cause it's like two and a half, three years since I've done it. I I'm heading down to the beach house. I put the episode in the car. I say, you know, here comes the announcer intro. And I say, hi, Veronica, welcome to a well-designed business. And then I don't, I look at the clock. I do, she does not get a moment to speak until eight minutes in. And I am just like, what the actual? 
how did this show ever get off the ground? So you want to talk about, do you have to be an expert before you start something? Like, no. And when we do Flashback Fridays now, I'm like, keep me away from them. Keep me away from them. And I... And I say to my editors, go slice that baby out. Cut <laughs> me up. You know, like, no. So, no, there's no expertville in what you start. There's a belief that your your data and your intuition and your inner voice has said to you, you're on the right track. Yeah. But yeah. expertville, no, that comes. I'm still waiting for expertville <laughs> in podcasting. <laughs> I think the thing that's cool, though, and you probably are very aware of this because you had your window treatment business before you did your podcast, is you can be doing something very well and still strike out doing something else. You know, take a take a chance yes. to do something else. Yes. Um, well, and the other thing too is, you know. All of us don't actually have our first, you know, several attempts of something documented. <laughs> like, like, you know, when I did window treatments in the beginning and I wasn't so good at it, we don't have those on documentation for all of time. <laughs> But now you do with this podcast. So there. (laughs) That's it. It's like right there. Yeah. But no, I love the courage that, and here you are in another big pivot. And so I don't even know, you know, we'll edit it out if you don't want me to ask this question, but are you intending with the introduction of the book in fall of 2024 and the podcast coming and the curated travel, are you intending to keep the interior design firm yes. or are you, you know, yes. oh, you are. Yes. I don't See? know if you know okay. Tracy Connell, but uh, Tracy Connell and I are, are, oh, are I love yeah, Tracy. We're, we're buddies in a mastermind and she has an equally successful interior design business, but she's also a great coach for, yeah, interior, the yeah, yeah. Um, for interior designers. Um, and she and I talk about the interior design business as our crown jewel. You know, oh, it is nice. um, sometimes we, we think of it as uh, like a train. And um, yes. the interior design business is the engine, you know, but that doesn't mean you can't have all these yeah. little train cars and the caboose mm-hmm. at the end, mm-hmm. you know, they're doing all these other things. For me, um, I just see it continuing to go, right? I'm at this point yes. where I am reimagining um, so many things after, the, after travel, you know, there'll be a product line and um, if all goes well, there may be a streaming series also. Um, nice. But putting it into the universe putting it into the universe right. yes yes, yes. Um, and then the funny thing is Luann I even um, I even think I know what my great work is going to be but it's it's related oh. to it's not related to beauty um, it's related to um, inspiration but it's um, it's going to be a story regarding my family it's going to be historical fiction so I don't I don't know if I'm going to be 85 writing that I might be 85 years old. You mean old. A, gr- a novel? Yes. A grand novel. Yes. Oh. Yes. I, and I already know the first line of the book. It's like, she became an adult when she was five years old. That's 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 all oh. I have thus far. But but stay tuned. Okay. And I'm going to have more sentences for that. <laughs> I'm going to put other sentences in it. Right, right. <laughs> I promise before I hit up the publisher, I'll have a few more sentences. Yeah. I do. I kind of see myself like sitting in front of a window typing. And this is like my last great work. Like I'm doing this is this is like going to inspire people. So, um, I love but it. yeah, one of the other things I was going to mention also, Luann, when we talk about all of these different opportunities to reimagine oneself that, um, you know, you and I were talking about family commitments earlier and everything is not necessarily supposed to happen at one time. Um, There are seasons for everything. One of the reasons why this is a great season for me reimagining so many different things is because this morning I dropped my son off at college and he is the second of two. Um, Ah. So what that means is that there'll be more time available for me to embark on different interests, right? And different passions and things that I've always wanted to do. But, um, you know, I can tell you about maybe uh, five years ago, um, prior to maybe six, seven years ago, I was like, you know what? I want to design overseas. Okay. So, and I did, I started designing overseas and then guess what? Wow. I started missing my family too much and they were missing me too much. It's like, be careful what you ask for. for. So I did it. I did it successfully, but guess what? I I stepped back from it 
because it wasn't the season for me to do that. It didn't feel good in longevity. So, um, you know, sometimes we have to make decisions for ourselves that are in alignment with what's ideal for our lives in that moment. So, um, you know, especially with women, I think that we have to kind of kind of think of that of this I can't remember if this was Oprah somebody else who said you can have everything you just can't have everything at one time (laughs) time. (laughs) but um even though I try sometimes to do that you know then I get that that thing in my stomach (laughs) like (laughs) like, stop it um yeah but you know that but that's also an interesting lesson to learn right when you are a driven personality and you do have, um, opportunity and you create opportunity, you know, like that, that's, um, that's a, that's a come to Jesus moment. Okay. Here I am designing overseas. I asked for this. I created this. And I love that. It doesn't sound like that, you know, like I don't, to me, I, I, I don't imagine it was like, I can't do this because of all you people in my family here. It was like, you know what, let me, let me just re reframe yeah. this. This is actually not what's making me most fulfilled yes. right now. I'm missing you guys. You're missing yeah. me. And what exactly is the point mm-hmm. of this? And so it's also that. It's also, you know, when you recognize all the different signs that we're talking about, the good and the bad, it is that. It's also to just check in and say, yeah, okay. Like, I, it's funny that you mentioned Tracy Connell because Tracy, Tracy coached with me for a okay. year. And I'm going to tell you, I've said this a dozen times, 90% of our coaching was me going, yes, you're capable of that. Do we need to do that? Yes, you're capable of that. Is that what you really want to do? Yes, you're capable of that. It was like reining a wild horse, yeah. okay, yeah. because she's so incredibly yes. talented yes. and has these abilities. Yes. And it was, so it is recognizing just because I can, just because I'm capable, doesn't really serve me at this season of my life because you get less joy yeah. from it. You know what yeah. I mean? When, when it doesn't fit, it has to fit the jigsaw puzzle of yeah. your life. And that's also where you have to be careful, right? Cause you can get tripped up because the ego might say to you, you know what? I already told people I'm doing this. Or I already told people I'm going to do this. And then you have to give yourself the permission to walk away. That's right. It's my life. Yes, I'm going to tell you, guess absolutely. what? Now I'm telling you I'm not doing yes, it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But it's not that easy. A lot, sometimes it is the pressure of, I've said I'm going to do this. I mean, you know, I'm making a, like a flip out of it, but it's not. Like that also can be a very serious, huh, yeah. but I've invested in telling everybody about yeah. this. Yeah. And now it doesn't feel so good for me or my family isn't loving this. It's, it's uh, you know, it's funny because, it takes knowing yourself, right? It takes, it takes the white space. Like you said, the quiet space, the giving yourself that, that you take the 15 minutes every morning and you add to it with an undivided 15 minutes on Sunday. And, um, you do, you have to give yourself that space to check in. Is all of this good? Does this feel good? Am I doing the right thing? Yes. Yes. And then then also ask yourself, does this sound like fun to some degree? Right. Because, because like, what's the point of us working so hard and doing stuff if we're not having some fun, right? Like we put so much time into work. Yeah. 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 No, we should be getting some kind of enjoyment out of it. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, my journey where I'm at right now is seven years in doing this and every minute of is, is fun. Literally great (laughs) is understanding Oh, you don't have to do it all day, every day, just because it's fun. Mm-hmm. You can have fun other ways. Mm-hmm. Because then your throat's going to so start is, clogging up on you. <laughs> this is the truth. This is the truth. And this has been like since June, and I've been talking about it and going live on Instagram and like making this commitment to go into November at Luann Live feeling balanced. Yeah. You know what's like, so interesting about like, this, that you're, you're sharing about balance and, and getting joy? Um this, the, the podcast that I'm doing is not regarding interior design. And I have to tell you that people were kind of pressuring me like, but Lorna, you know, you should be talking about design. You should be talking about design. I, I don't, I don't want to talk about design. I want to talk about people. So for me, I, I struggled with it for a second because the, the reason it wasn't coming together is because I was trying to fit it into what other people thought I should be talking about when in actuality, what I wanted to do 
was to shine light on the human experience and on the journeys that successful people have to take to get to the point of success. You know, we talked about it not being a straight and linear path. It has all these curves in the road. And I wanted to uncover that to give some people inspiration and hope who are hoping to do different things, like to know, hey, you know what? For example, one of my one of my clients is um, is a university professor, and he shared with me that seventy three percent of people don't end up in the career that they had their major in. So that's just I mean seventy seventy three percent. So just so, just because you start out one way doesn't mean you have to not only end that way, but you can take like however many derivations of that like along the way you can do something different 20 times and just just right. remember the, there's 73 percent other people who are doing, doing the same thing as you <laughs> you know but um but for me you know with with the podcast like I really had to think like what is it that you want Lorna um mm-hmm. and interestingly uh, my girlfriend Andrea asked me that question about maybe seven years ago and I was like I don't know. <laughs> nobody, you know? nobody ever asks no. me that, including myself. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What do, I want? what do you mean? I got to, I got to feed these kids. I got to do this. I got to do all the homework well, yeah. with them. I don't, I don't that's know right. what I want. How dare you ask me that question? That's right. I want for all these people to be magically fed and out of my hair. That's, <laughs> that's what I want. I'm not getting right. it. So why don't we just get back to what they want? <laughs> but, the, but the interesting thing is that muscle, once you start exercising it, oh, beware, beware. Oh. Because then you're like, no, I don't want that. No, Good that's not going to make me happy. And I don't care what all of you think. I don't want to do this. What I know is right is you. this. And I think that what happens is, when you are in your sweet spot, it becomes explosive because you are being your authentic self. Mm. And it's like T.D. Jakes talks about this, like you throw out your, your magnet and then every metal piece is attracted to it. If you throw out your authentic magnet, that is what happens. And I think that people know when you're doing something that's fake, right? Or you're trying too hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. You can see fake a hundred miles, miles away. miles away. So there's like a radar, yeah. right? It's like, exactly. Yay. So needless to say, <laughs> needless to say, y'all, my podcast is not about interior design. It's about life journey and it's about style. Sorry. <laughs> Just- <laughs> Love it. Right. Love it. Right. 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 So, so here's the thing. The book is yes. coming out 2024, 2024 fall, fall of 2024. 2024, just before holiday season and entertaining and all that. Yes. Does it have a title already, Lorna? Um, or can we not share it just yet? That might also be not appropriate. I don't know. I, since I haven't checked in with the publisher, I, I yeah, I won't we won't say do it then. It. Okay, it. yeah, okay, that's okay. I as soon as I asked, I was like, ah, eh, might not be able to see. But the podcast is going to launch when? The podcast is launching in September, end of September, and it is called twenty twenty three. It is called Lorna Gross Enchanted Life and Style. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All I think right, of Cinderella so, every time I say that. <laughs> Enchanted. You got I'm telling you guys gotta watch the YouTube of this. Forget the audio. <laughs> I swear to God. What's so funny is the reason I say that is you just said you can tell when somebody's not being authentic. And I am having this experience, like I did a few moments ago when you were describing your curated travel <laughs> trip coming up that end of your business that you're launching. You, and just now when you're like, I think of Cinderella every time, <laughs> like it's literally, you are exuding it in your body language when you are <laughs> saying these things. And so you want to talk about, like, you can tell bullcrapper from a mile away. You can also tell the authentic person oh, from a mile away, you, too, because you're just living in it and it's giving you joy and you're you're happy to spread the joy about it. It's really intoxicating. It's, it's Thank fun. You. I it's appreciate cool. you saying that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 100% truth. <laughs> 
So, all right. So this is amazing. I have loved this conversation. I've loved learning all of these things about you that I did not learn from either <laughs> of our dinner parties. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure now. Uh, you will launch in September. So you'll give us the link to your podcast sure, by then. Sure. And so we'll put the link in the show notes. Yes. For yes. It. Okay. We'll do that for sure. All righty. Well, thanks so much for being here with me today, Lorna. It was so much oh, fun. Oh, it was my pleasure. It was my pleasure. And if I might just leave your audience with one thing, I don't remember who wrote this book, but the title of the book was Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Feel the Fear yeah. and Do It Anyway. Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. What a relevant way to end this conversation with Lorna. If you're feeling scared to take a chance at something, then I hope that after listening to Lorna, that the fear is diminished even a little, at least enough to see the possibilities in front of you. I love how she said, you get the signals. Back in 2014, I got the signal. The inside voice was telling me it was time for the next thing, the next enterprise, but I didn't know what it was yet. I was doing all the things, reading, listening to podcasts, sitting quietly, listening for the ideas and the answers. And then the day, the day in 2015, after being interviewed on someone else's podcast, I got the moment. As soon as I hung up that call, I knew, I knew as sure as I was sitting there that that was what I was supposed to do. So now if you know me even a little, you know, my next thought was, how in the heck could I ever figure out how to make a podcast work? I mean, just from the tech standpoint, I went, how could I do that? <laughs> with my ineptitude with tech, I literally should have and could have in the next moment said to myself, never mind, a podcast isn't the thing, it's not going to work. But that's just the thing. When your inside voice speaks to you and you hear it, you know the rest is just details. And who is it that says, I think it's Marie Forleo, she says, it's all figure outable. We all have this intuition. The question is, have you spent time cultivating yours and do you listen to yours? The second part of all of this is executing on it. So let's talk about it a little. When Lorna took the course for managers that told her she wasn't doing the thing that she was supposed to be doing for living, for a living, it was time for her to pivot, except she too had no idea what she was supposed to be doing. See, if this is you, you are no different than me or Lorna. You don't have to know what. You simply start by acknowledging your inside voice, that it's time, okay? What's that quote, begin at the beginning? So how did she find out? How did Lorna find out? She even went to Barnes and Nobles to try and research what would it was that she was supposed to be doing, right? It took her six months to figure it out. And that's when she started to see the signs and she learned to embrace the signals she was getting, all pointing to interior design. Now, I will just say a very good podcast episode to listen um, about this is from my very first year of podcasting with Jan Bowen. She gave us a very terrific walkthrough on how to see the signs in your life and how to connect them to your intuition. So I highly recommend episode 189. Okay, so for Lorna, the signs were piling up, right? We've heard of the Sunday scaries, but Lorna was getting the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday scaries. That's pretty heavy. Lorna thought at first that she wasted all those years in corporate before working in interior design. But the truth is no time or experience is ever wasted. Everything brings you to where you should be, as long as you recognize when it's time to switch. The signals come. Learn to embrace them. And if you think you aren't receiving the signal, Lauren said a great way to recognize them is to go silent. Sound familiar? If you've listened to Katie McDonald's episode 881, then you know that she recommends it too. Her homework that she gave to us was to sit for five minutes in silence. Brew a cup of tea, sit with a cup of tea, drink a cup of tea with no phone, no music, no nothing. Okay, it's a beginning to training yourself to being with yourself in your own thoughts. All right. 
Something else that will help you is surrounding yourself with the right people and knowing when to not listen to other people's opinions, okay? And we all have these people in our lives. Lorna's mom, for crying out loud, was telling her not to quit her corporate job. You know, for all the good reasons her mom was telling her, no doubt about that. But the truth is, your inside voice knows better even than the person who loves you most. Okay. Now there may be a person in your life, even a loved one who does actually deter you from doing what you feel you should be doing. You have to power through that and know that it's not about them, that this is about you. And you have to learn to listen to the inside voice so that you're just not going with what someone else says because it's the easy way, whether the, the, what they're saying is to stay and who you are and what you're doing or change into something else. All right. It's about tapping into your highest self, okay? People even had opinions on what Lorna's podcast should be about. They wanted her to focus on interior design, and she even considered it for a moment, even though it's not what she wanted to do, right? You're, you're looking at smart people, and you're thinking maybe they know better. Sometimes it's easy for us to get caught up in what us, others think we should do. All right. So you have to surround yourself with supportive people, because like I said, you're going to have questions along the way. It's natural. We're human and we need those people to help us. But we are our master. OK. And remember, you don't actually have to master something to embark on something new. We're never going to feel 100 percent the expert, especially, especially if you don't try it. You heard me with Lorna, right? I listened to just one of my early episodes for eight minutes and I couldn't listen anymore. <laughs> and I've never listened again. I mean, I know I'm better now, but I also know I'm not as good as I'll be next month or next year. And I know I did my best then, but my best now looks different. Okay, so do what you can do in the moment you can do it. And know that it's okay, that you can't wait until you absolutely feel confident and 100%. Because I don't know that that day comes, okay? So now, Lorna is not talking about taking a big risk without the signs or intuition, right? It's a combination of everything. The secret sauce to knowing you are making the right move is when you've gathered all of your signals, You've listened to your intu intuition. You've prepared in whatever tactical, tangible ways you can, okay? And then you take the leap. You take the calculated risk, okay? Knowing that you will always grow and improve. So put that perfection out of your mind. And if something doesn't work, just adjust, okay? Because what is the other option? staying stuck and unhappy because you're not sure how to do the next idea, right? Lorna said failure means that you've tried. And the more you do it, the braver you will be the next time you do it. This is absolutely gold right there, okay? So one thing I want to tell you is super exciting. If you're going to High Point in another week and a half, um, you can hear Lorna and myself along with Tracy Connell of The Gloss and Sass Says, Christy Rocha, for a dynamic and informative conversation surrounding how to achieve health and wealth within your design firm and your life. Okay, the four of us will be together at High Point Market on Sunday, October 15th at 1230 Eastern Time. These hashtag smart ladies will be sharing strategic and tangible tank takeaways to help you place your company in a higher level of profitability, a place of genuine sustainability and a place of absolute fulfillment. OK, the combination of the three. Let's make some money. Let's do it in a way that we can do for as many years as we choose. And let's be happy along the way. These three ladies are committed to this point of view. And I would love for you to hear what they have to say. All right. So, and if you can't make it to High Point, I encourage you to join me and my daughter, Christy Rocha, as my co-host at Luann Live, November 5th to 8th in sunny Orlando, Florida. Tracy Connell will be there as well. She is a keynote sponsor, and I'm so excited to have her with us for this conference. For the last seven years, I've been asking all of the questions on this podcast. Now you have the chance 
Join us in Orlando and meet the podcast guests that you've come to know and love over the years. Corey Damon Jenkins, Brad Levitt, Nancy Ganzikoffer, Nicole Heimer, Sandra Funk, Michelle Williams, Nicole White, Cheryl Luckett, Bria Hamill, Jude Charles, Eileen Hunt. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know I'm going to leave people off. The list is incredible. Okay. What do you want your business to look like in 2024, in 2027, in 2034? Listen, learn, and ask, and leave this conference energized, transformed, armed with a plan and a community of like-minded people dedicated to supporting you, your success, and your dreams. Okay. Think I'm overstating it? Test it. Don't forget, I've done this event two times now. I know what we are delivering to you. I'm not imagining it. I'm not hoping for it. I'm not wondering for it. I know the results that so many of your colleagues have gotten by attending Luann Live. I know this is a singular opportunity to be in the right room, the room filled with the people that will change your business, your mind, and your journey. My speakers will be sharing their ideas, strategies, and tips that built their businesses. We will focus on builder and design collaborations, branding, licensing, building time for being a human, and for expanding your mind as an entrepreneur. Okay. Keynote presentations, networking, collaboration, two and a half days, no stone will go unturned. These professionals are an open book right at your disposal. Let's develop your well-designed business within your well-designed life. To learn about the details of Luann Live, go to luannlive.com. All right. Well, thank you, Lorna. It has been so fun to finally do the podcast with you after having dinners together and chats and all the things. This was long overdue, and I appreciate that you took the time to do it with me today. I will see you, Lorna, in October. I will see you guys in High Point in October and at Luann Live in November. Okay. And lastly, be sure to check your podcast server for Lorna's podcast, Lorna Gross, Enchanted Life and Style. Okay. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.